Now, if I wanted to create something like a crushed velvet, it would be fairly simple. So let's name it velvet crushed or let's open it up. So that's what we have. Also, let's apply it here. Let's just make some space. This is the bump map. And this is what controls the bump map. This is the standard shader. So let's. So let me first of all just duplicate everything. We need another layer. And for this second standard shader, what I'm going to be doing, if I also run the IPR, I'm just going to uh, make a brighter version compared to what we have right now. Okay. So let's increase the value so it gets a bit brighter for the second color let's maybe go to something like 85 and this is the second one that basically add the adds the fuzziness so let's and let just make it there we go. Now we have two versions of the same uh, velvet shader. This is the first one, as you can see, dark, and this is the second one, which is brighter. And now we just need a map to combine these two guys to get our crushed velvety look. So let's use a layer color. Also, I can come here and just make these things a bit easier to control later on so there you go so also this is the same, the same cell noise that adds the fuzziness so let's add it here you can delete this one there we go so uh, this is our first layer and also this is going to be our second layer and I can select this and increase layer one alpha and for the layer two alpha I'm just going to simply use an image so let's select a Something like this would be nice. So let's use this as the layer three, layer two alpha. And now this is going to be the shader. And so this is the shader and this is our bump map. And as you can see, we get that crushed velvety look, but I think this image has some problem. Obviously the repetition is way too much because of the UVs that this object have. So let's go to 0.2 and 0.2. And this is the result that we're gonna get. And let's also connect the pump here. So I'm, I'm just going to wait for the IPR and I'll be back when it's finished. So here is our render and as you can see, it's beautiful. Uh, so for the next example, what I'm going to be creating is going to be a simple upholstery cotton fabric shader, which is going to be simple. So let's create a new standard shader and just let's name it cotton and apply to our object. The same principle also is here. So let's increase the fuse weight to one and I'm going to be using a simple image here. So the same fabric pattern that we had. So I need to create two versions of this, a version which is uh, darker and it's going to be appear in the faces that are looking at us directly uh, and one brighter for the faces that are uh, perpendicular to our viewing direction. So let me just use a layer color node to do that. So layer color node. So this is, let me see how it's going to be applied here. So 
let's save this. So we need to go to its coordinates. So now it's better. Great. So this is going to be our first layer. And now for the second layer, I'm going to mix this image with a brighter color. We can simply, uh, you know, color correct this if I if we wanted to just increase the uh, maybe exposure a bit, uh, decrease the saturation, something like this. But I think using a mix node is a better way. So we're going to be mixing this image with just a simple white color and press OK. And this is going to be our second layer, layer two. And this is going to be controlling our diffuse color. So right now, okay, this is what we are getting. And now for the layer two alpha, I'm gonna be using a facing ratio node again. So let's connect that for the time being invert and if you take a look at this preview so obviously we want it to be more closer to the edges and make it a bit tighter maybe something like 0.25 and let's go to 0.9 here now we're going to be using this as layer 2 alpha. So the layer 2 will appear only on the white parts and on the edges basically. So if I connect this, hopefully we should be able to see a good result. And let me also use this second camera for this example and see what we get, let me just maybe render this section. So I think it's not too bad. Maybe we can make it so it wouldn't be that tight can see now this maybe go to something like point three let me just stop this and take a look at the facing ratio itself I guess something like this should work. So let me just see what we get if I press play. Uh, we can add uh, also a bump map, but for this very busy pattern and which is black and white, it's really hard to actually see bump mapping on this. So I'm not going to add a bump map to this one. I think now it's looking better. Okay. Uh, let me just uh, see the whole thing and we can decide whether it's good or not. Uh, so one problem that I'm seeing is these parts are just way too white and a fabric like this would never look like this. So what I think the problem must be is the second mix node which is right now is set to 0.5 so we're basically if I just connect this directly um, let me stop that if I connect this mix node directly you can see it's just so white and this is going to appear on the uh, perpendicular faces to our viewing direction. So if I just 
uh, use something like 0.2 so the mix node will favor our first input which is this image you can see now we get this darker let's see it's back to this one and 0.2 now we should be seeing it better there you go that's better also let me get back to this camera stop the IPR and see where we are I'm not seeing my second camera here Let's open this thing again and for the facing ratio I think it should be just fine let's go to our standard shader again and see what we're gonna get so here is our render and as you can see it's quite beautiful now if I want to create a colored version of the same shader simply I can duplicate this let's apply this and open it up so let's see this is these so let's use a layer color node i just need to multiply this image which is the one that controls um, the pattern with a color right so this is the layer color node and the color i'm going to be using is going to be this color you can use whatever color you want and the image you can actually run the IPR as we go through let's just make sure there you go so this image is going to be our second layer and what I'm going to do is to increase layer 1 increase layer 2 and use something like subtract now we, we get that color and we get that pattern also right and now instead of this image we can use this one as our layer 1 and use this one as the first input for the mix node also and if I just connect this um, not a pattern as you can see it's not going to be as obvious and strong as the first uh, example that we had now we can actually use the bump map here so to make it a bit more obvious and sharp so let's use a bump map because it's not a black and white the pattern itself the diffuse color here so a bump map can be used and add to the overall shader so that's our bump that is the shader and this image is going to be bump map so let me maybe actually select this part this time so we can compare to this part and if I connect it maybe can increase this to something like three centimeter it doesn't really actually affects the overall look a lot so now if you compare this part that has the bump and this part without the pump you can see how effective it is so and let me just name this cotton colored and let's just wait for the IPR and I'll be back in a second so here is our render and as you can see it's beautiful 
Thanks for watching this video tutorial. It was a free sample from our course Developing Realistic Shaders in Arnold for Cinema 4D Volume 1. To see the rest of this lesson and tons of other video tutorials, make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out. See you next time.